everyone and welcome to the Commodity Culture channel. This is Commodity Culture Interviews where we like to give both new and experienced investors an overview of the commodity space. Before we get started, standard disclaimer, none of this is financial advice. Do your own due diligence. And these days we're certainly living in crazy times. Today's guest, Chris Taylor of the Financial Fitness YouTube channel focuses a lot on being properly prepared for a variety of scenarios for these times we live in, including massive inflation, food shortages, currency collapse, all sorts of fun stuff. So we're going to talk about that today, and we're going to focus on how to be prepared financially by prudently investing in times of turmoil. Chris, welcome to the program. Thank you. It's nice to be here. So why don't we just get started with your own journey in investing. Uh, how did you get started and when did you get started? Okay, so, you know, I started trading time for money, like what a lot of us do. And after you do that for a while, uh, if you're not a compul compul compulsive spender, you're going to wind up with a little extra. And you can do a few things with that. You can put it in stocks and bonds and mutual funds, you know, the Susie Orman, Dave Ramsey route. Or you can do kind of more the Robert Kiyosaki, you know, invest in hard assets, real estate and stuff like that. So that book, that's really what kind of turned me on to, you know, being in hard assets was probably two different books. Mainly was The Richest Man in Babylon and Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And after you read those books, you kind of understand how money is made, how, how real wealth is made. And it hasn't changed. I mean, it goes on way, you go as far back as you want to, and it's always the same. And if you take it away from those people that acquire it, they will find a way to end up with it again, using the same principles. So once you understand that, you get that kind of knowledge, you can figure out how to apply it to your life. And that's exactly what I did with real estate. Uh, that was my first uh Probably, and I've had other investments and I've always had a little bit of gold and silver just because, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out our currency is dying. I mean, I, I, and I don't know why people haven't seen it yet, but I guess when it gets to 20 or 30% inflation, maybe they'll start to see it then. I don't know. And I'm kind of thankful. It gives me time to sell rental properties and buy more uh, gold and silver, you know, and, and even get into some gold and silver mining stuff. But I'm digressing a little bit, but after the, you know, the rental properties, they start spitting out money. You know, they start, uh, you start, you know, my phone will go off it'll go bing and it'll be, Hey, somebody paid you. And, you know, and when that starts happening, when you start experiencing cash flow, uh, it's a whole different thing than you've ever experienced before. You go from trading your time for money to actually making money, do it essentially not doing anything letting your money work for you and when you start to experience that you, you go in all kind of different directions or i did and i created a gym equipment business and, and you know acquire things that pay you to own them that that's kind of my motto and uh, that's just kind of where i started here we are and we're talking about gold and silver now because it's kind of in the mail it's, it's inevitable. So the smart people are, have already positioned. And on my channel and your channel, we're trying to wake the masses up to say, hey, look, if you've got $100,000 in the bank, it'll be worth $80,000 at the end of this year. That ought, to, that ought to ring somebody's bell. That'll wake them up, you know. But we're not quite there yet. But we're, we're going to, every day, we sell uh, gold and silver through Miles Franklin. Every day, people are waking up to real assets. So uh, that's where I started was real estate, creating small businesses, and now YouTube to try to help others do the same. And I hope I answered your question. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, as I mentioned at the start of the program, there's some crazy times these days. Uh, here in 2022, we've got, you know, the massive money printing in response to the pandemic all over the world. Previously democratic governments in the West seemingly turning authoritarian, which has been kind of crazy. You know, I'm I'm from uh, Canada and I'm currently in Croatia, and uh, that the the reason why is because things just got insane. Uh, you got the war between Russia and Ukraine, of course. You know, turmoil in Sri Lanka. They've got food shortages, fuel shortages, and it goes on and on. So, where do you see all of this heading? Are we just in for dark times? Is there a light at the end of the tunnel? What? Where do? You, how do you see it? 
Okay. So I'm an optimistic kind of guy. I, I really don't like the doom gloom stuff. I talk about it all the time because we need to look at it in its eyes. You know, you're sticking your head in the sand and hoping things keep going like they're gonna like they've been going for the last 50 years. It's not a very smart thing to do, in my opinion. But we can take advantage of these crashes. This is going to be the biggest wealth transfer in the history of mankind. Okay. So, and I'll, I refer to it as the Thunderdome. Anything past 2020, anything goes, man. It's wild. So, you know, we're experiencing pestilence and all this stuff. And we're essentially, we're kind of heading down, descending into the Thunderdome. And when we get down there, where our fertilizer prices are catastrophic. Farmers are not planting corn and things they usually plant. They're planting soybeans. There's like a soybean shortage now. So a seed, soybean seed shortage because everybody's planting soybeans because they take less fertilizer. And that produces a whole nother you know, issue with feeding cattle and chickens and, and you know, corn is a big deal. So we're, and the government's doing everything they can to take away from the food supply. I don't know if you've noticed that. I cover it quite a bit on my channel. Uh, so we're heading into some really crazy times. That's what I'm trying to get at. But when we get down there, because people freak out. People really, really, you know, the knee-jerk reaction when there's no food. You know, my people have got food. We've got food, we're bracing for impact, you know, because we know they're telling us right now, there's turn on the news you can see about food shortages. We've been talking about it for a year. And now it's here. <clears throat> well, there's gonna be a, a spot there where this stuff is gonna be traded for food, I think. Uh, it was, uh, you can go back to Weimar, Germany. You can go back to Venezuela. You know, eggs went up 15,000 X, not percent X. Gold went up. 25,000 eggs. So food and metals are going to be, you know, closer together, I think. So in that environment, I think when this stuff goes up and, and hard assets going up, I think, and, and interest rates might go to 18 or 20 percent. That, that really blows people mind, minds when I say that. So when we get to the bottom of the Thunderdome, there's going to be all kind of investment opportunities. For the people that are in gold miner stocks, uh, silver mining stocks, there's only so much silver, okay? The, the premiums are starting to go up because people are not wanting to let go of this stuff. They're not going to sell it for the fake paper price. They're, it, it, we're going to be looking at $30 and $40 premiums. And it sounds crazy, I know, and I'm always early. You're going to learn that about me. I'm crazy early, but, you know, we're going to have that opportunity if you're in position. So that's the, that's my hope. That's my optimistic side thinking this is going to be like a three or four year thing. I hope, I hope it's not the dark ages <laughs> and we're going to prosper. It's going to be this big wealth transfer and, and, you know, we're going to get our current, some type of gold backed currency, hopefully. And, and, you know, we're going to do that. And then after that, maybe, Maybe we actually do live in the Thunderdome. I ho I'm hoping the Thunderdome's 10 or 20 years away, possibly longer, but we've definitely got this thing coming because, uh, you know, we're really living on a wing and a prayer with all this monetary MMT policy where we print as much money as we want and you have to use it because I said so. That's uh, wrapped up in a nutshell what it is. And when, you know, that's kind of the. 30,000 foot view of what I'm hoping for. Right. So let's talk about precious metals a, a little bit more because you certainly touched on them. What role do you see them playing? Do you think everybody should have their hands on at least some form of precious metals, whether it's gold or silver bullion for, for the times up ahead? Yeah. Okay. So I have people asking this question all the time. How much should I have? You know, that's a normal thing. And I immediately say, you need a financial statement. And they're like, wow, well, okay, because you need to have 10 to 50%. That's how you figure out how much to give. You got to find out what you're worth. Your assets minus your liabilities will give you a number. And you need 10 to 
It's not a, that's not financial advice. It's just what, how people hedge against inflation. And, and, and it's just your protection against inflation because historically gold retains wealth. Now, silver, on the other hand, is a little more of a speculation, not much, not, you know, not to me, because it's the only thing that hasn't moved <laughs> as far as commodities. But, you know, the gold and silver ratio, when you're, when you're investing and you're, you're thinking through this and you're, you're wanting to hedge, silver is undervalued to gold, in my opinion. Uh, I think it's the gold ratio, gold to silver ratio is like high 70s. So, as you're getting into it, be thinking about this. It's going to move up. Silver's going to catch back up to gold somewhat. Historically, it's like 16 to 14 to 1. A lot of people are going to take their silver and swap it for gold. And there's a good chance silver might pass gold. I know that's hard to wrap your head around, but we've never lived through a hyperinflation. So, uh, you know, we're living in the Thunderdome. Anything's possible. But as you're getting into wanting to hedge and own precious metals, that's why I own them to retain my wealth. And I, I have a, a certain bag that I keep 10 to 50%. And I don't like to tell people what I keep because they'll do what I do. And, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I've been wrong before, or maybe I was early, <laughs> but um, that's pretty much my gold and silver run. Okay. Let's switch over to potential upcoming food shortages and agriculture, and in particular, fertilizer, because the price of fertilizer has gone up parabolically recently. What's your thoughts on that and, and where that's headed in the future? Well, uh, you got to have natural gas to make fertilizer. Uh, fertilizer is already up 300%. And I have people tell me all the time, no, it's not. I just bought a bag of Triple 13 and it wasn't up 300%. Well, I went to the guy that distributes fertilizer. There's a huge distribution center about 100 miles from here. And I went and talked to him personally and said, is it up 300%? He said, yes, without a doubt. So, and that's just right now. See, the global fertilizer shortage is, we're, we're going to suffer, but the people that are Africa, you know, these third world countries that are barely hanging on, they're the people that are going to really, really hurt. I mean, they're, uh, I, I think it's going to be the biggest starvation in, in U.S. In, in our lifetime. Uh, it's going to be a, a global starvation. And fertilizer has everything to do with the way we make food. Uh, and I've got a lot of people that say natural fertilizers, you know, you got to have natural fertilizer. Well, there's only so much of that. That's how we, NPK uh, is how we feed the masses. I mean, the guy won. <laughs> an award for it it's a really really big deal and we're losing that pretty quick uh and the price you're seeing at 300 percent is just a supply and demand thing and that's probably going to get worse everything is about to go up well i say that I th in the downturn there's no telling but if we can't get natural gas if the government keeps on really trying to strangle us out of our own natural gas that we're standing on top of right now on our own country, if they really don't want to let us drill it, I, I really think it's going to be, it's not going to be fun. And I hope people that are listening to me right now have a little food. Just, it's not going to, you got to eat anyway. And if you buy it now, you won't have to pay the inflated price later as much. You know, it just makes sense to have rice, beans, just stuff you eat anyway. I just eat off the front and place in the back. You know, just you don't put a bunch of stuff in a bucket and store it in the attic where it goes bad or gets, you know, degrades. Use your food you eat. Yeah, that's exactly what I've been doing, keeping non-perishables. Why not keep some, some beans, some rice and stuff like that in the pantry and then just rotate it? You know what I mean? Like, and like you said, you're, it's just best, a worst case scenario, you end up saving money on inflation, right? When the price ends up going up. So it's just a, it's, it's a no brainer to me. Um, just wanted to speak a little bit about the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. You know, wheat seems to potentially be an issue there because Ukraine is the fifth largest exporter of wheat. Russia is the first. There's all sorts of sanctions getting levied against them. Um, how do you see that conflict potentially affecting things? 
you know, it, it often gets blamed by politicians for everything. Obviously, a lot of what's going on, the wheels were already in motion. But do you think the conflict has perhaps, you know, sped some of that along? And, and how do you see it affecting food supply and, and perhaps other commodities? All right. So, oh, man, I, re- I quit talking about the war uh, right after it started because we're getting so much propaganda. Yeah. There is no way to know what what's being said so i really try to stay away from it because there's just no way to know because i'm not there but there's certain things that we get from there like neon for one uh goes into the chip making that's in ukraine like you said wheat they're the uh, what are the bread basket of europe that's going to be a big big deal um i have a list of rare earths that's since we're talking about getting stuff to us that come from there and China and some critical, critical things that we've got to have. And it's, you know, we got to have wheat for food. You know, I get that. But again, that's going to affect Europe way more than us. You know, that's the, that's why, I mean, I think the foreign countries are not going to deal with this as well. If we keep punishing Russia with our currency by taking them off the SWIFT system, which we probably, we already have actually. Uh, That is, you know, necessity is the mother of all invention. They're already got their own system. They're trading with China and India and they're they're setting up their own gold backed system. Uh, You know, that's, (laughs) that kind of information is really hard for me to wrap my mind around. Um, I'll get into the, I don't want to get off the subject of commodities because there's something that happened the other day and Palladi- uh, platinum group, vanadium, they're, they're from Russia. We don't get that anymore. Uh, China's rare earths. See, we're, we're about to have a conflict with China. So I'd like to bring that up while we're talking about Russia. Yeah, for sure. I don't, I, I don't think we can punish China. I mean, they could cut us off. We'll, we get everything from there. I mean, everything I got on, except for this hat, it's made in the U.S., uh, is made in China. And rare earth is 97%. And we're getting neon from Ukraine that we don't get anymore. We're getting uh, tungsten. It's a big deal. Tungsten goes into carbide. Where that's how you turn parts on a lathe. And, you know, this is, it's 86% comes from China. There's a whole list of critical things that we have got to get. And it, it brings me to mind, I told you earlier, I was talking to David Morgan the other day about some of this. And it was actually about going back to the natural gas. See, I, I've been dealing with natural gas for, I don't know, 15 years. And we've got a lot of work here to do. And, but we're struggling getting parts, flanges, valves. We waited a month to get some six inch valves that we should have had that day. And he said it reminded him of want of a nail. And I printed it up, I can pretty much recite it, but if I try to recite it, I'll screw it up. <laughs> so it's, it's an old book, it's called For Want of a Nail. And you can put any of those rare earths or things from Russia, I know I didn't name all of them, into this spot. And I'll put one in in a minute, but I'm gonna read you the original. For one of the nail, the shoe was lost. For one of the shoe, the horse was lost. For one of the horse, the rider was lost. For one of the rider, the message was lost. For one of the message, the battle was lost. And for one of the battle, the kingdom was lost. And all for the want of a horseshoe nail. That's what we're experiencing now. Have you, you know what I mean about the things where you can have all the work in the gas field you need. You can have all the need for electric cars and computer chips but if you can't get these rare earths uh (laughs) you're for the one of the nail yeah that makes perfect sense it's all of these secondary effects uh the 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 absence of certain critical ingredients whether it be rare earths as you're talking about certain types of metals etc can create kind of a rippling effect that goes throughout the entire economy and causes all sorts of terrible secondary effects um 
Why don't we start to wrap things up here and touch on how can people protect themselves in, in these times economically, financially? You've touched on precious metals. Um, I know you invest in mining stocks as well. What, what are some of the ways that you think the average person can, can protect themselves through investment? Well, I think it's going to be like Doug Casey said. I like to quote him. Uh, when, when this, see, all this liquidity is out there, you know, we're the producer of currency. <laughs> That's what we produce and we ship it all over the place. When all this currency runs to hard assets like gold and silver, we're going to run out and it's going to be fast. And he said it best. He said, when that happens, it's going to be like fitting the contents of the Hoover Dam into a garden hose. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen to mining stocks. I think when, when people start to run to gold and silver, there's not going to be any. They might even go to crypto, but we're not talking about that. I, I, my, most of my people are going to run to gold and silver. And if they can't find it, they're going to go to the next best thing. And that's the liar standing next to the hole in the ground that's saying he's got gold in the ground. And I'm not saying all of them like that. My mission is to find the best miners. I've been traveling around. I got a core sample right here. Um, I really want to get involved and figure out which ones are the best because I know this is coming. And if you're able to buy, miners are cheap right now because this isn't happening yet. I thought it would have happened a long time ago. But, you know, like I said, I'm early. So that's, that's a really, in my opinion, that's a really good way to take advantage of the situation I've been talking about, the Thunderdome situation. You can be in line because I really think miners are going to move like crypto. And it could be lithium mines. It could be, you know, silver, gold, uh, these rare earths I mentioned. You know, we're going to have to start doing some of that stuff here. So try to, and look, all these junior miners I go to, they, they all have a pot of gold. And they're, you know, they all look so good. So really do your research. Listen to people like me and, and you and, and just different people and try to get a real good grasp on which ones to get into and, and put, and you don't have to put a lot. That's the thing. I mean, these guys are the, the penny dreadfuls, <laughs> you know, they're, they're sketchy, but I wouldn't have it any other way. It's volatile and you're, you're getting in at an opportune time. So Man, silver miners could be silver and gold and other commodities. Being into that on the heels, on, on the precipice of getting into a commodities super cycle would be a crazy good move, in my opinion. Now, you know, take that for what it's worth. Well, Chris, it's been an amazing conversation. Thank you so much. Uh, where can people find you online if they want to connect with you and see your videos? Okay, I have a YouTube. I have two YouTube channels. I'm teaching anybody that wants to make a living welding, because that's how I made my money to. That's what I traded my time for, so I could invest. Uh, <clears throat> pipe welding. I've got a Taylor Welding channel, and I've got a Financial Fitness channel. On the board, I've got uh, my Telegram channel is Financial Fitness three one eight, and I usually post the, the food shortage topics and the, the whatever the new sickness is for the day over there and, and it's it's my what the financial fitness is really just it's a community of like-minded people that uh give information to help each other and the welding channel is what it is it's to help people get going uh, making some real money great i'll link to both of those in the description below we'll have to have you on again to continue the conversation and thanks for joining us today absolutely thanks for having me commodity culture is a series on commodities and natural resources if you would like to see more, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you're always up to date with the latest episodes.